If you're interested in off-grid solar, then this video is definitely for you. Today I'll be showing you a 60 amp MPPT charge controller that's well made, has very high buyer satisfaction ratings, and the best part, it's on sale for only 80 bucks. Most MPPTs sold online at this current rating are much higher priced. This unit is also sold in a 30, 40, or 50 amp version. This solar charge controller was not offered to me, it was something that I requested Banggood sent to me. The first thing I'd like to do is quickly go over some differences between a PWM and MPPT charge controller. On the left side, you can see a typical PWM charge controller. PWM charge controllers have been around for a very long time. They're lower in price compared to an MPPT. They're effective and generally easier to use. They hold up very well and they're smaller in size. And how the unit works, it charges the battery using pulses and the pulses are adjusted automatically based on the state of charge of the battery. One drawback to a PWM charge controller is that they're less efficient compared to an MPPT. The MPPT is a newer technology, it's higher in price. It has an exceptionally high efficiency between 94 and 98 percent, which is 20 to 30 percent higher than the PWM. MPPTs are compatible with a wide range of solar panels and batteries with different voltages. The MPPT has three stages of charging, constant current, constant voltage, and float. Generally, the MPPT charge controller is going to be larger than the PWM. This charge controller is a high frequency DC to DC converter that optimizes the match between the solar panels and battery bank. If you live in a cold climate, you can benefit by using an MPPT charge controller because the cooler temperatures are going to increase the voltage output of the solar panels. In hotter temperatures in the summer, the output voltage for a solar panel or solar array is going to be lower. You can also benefit using the MPPT solar charge controller under hazy or slightly cloudy conditions. Even though the MPPT is highly effective in the cooler temperatures of winter, it's also an effective charge controller for the summer. The MPPT takes the input from the solar panels and adjusts the output to get the most current going into your battery or battery bank. When you purchase the unit, it includes four mounting clips. One goes here, there, and the same on the opposite side. You're going to have a small space behind the unit that's going to allow the charge controller to dissipate the heat better. And you also get this instruction manual, which I can say is well written, and probably the best one I've seen on all the product reviews that I've done. It's a plastic coated manual. This was not a cheap manual to make. I'm going to open this in a minute so you can see the inside, but you can see right here, the housing is a very thick aluminum or aluminum. You have a liquid crystal display and you have your four membrane switches. Down here at the bottom is your photovoltaic input or your solar panels. Positive, you have two openings, two screws. Negative, then you have your battery positive. There's two openings, battery negative two openings. And over here is just a five amp load that you can connect positive and negative. Before I open this up to show you the inside and give you a quick demonstration showing how it works, first let me explain how you would connect this up. For the demonstration, which you're going to see, I'm going to be using a 400 watt, 24 volt solar module. You don't have to use that. You can use two of those. You can use 12 volt panels. You can use whatever you like, but there is a maximum input power. And if you're going to be using 12 volt panels, it's gonna be 720 watts. If you're going to be using 24 volts, you can put up to 1440 watts, 36 volts, 2100 watts, or 48 volts, 2800 watts. Keep in mind, if you use an oversized array, the charge controller will not be operated at maximum power point. So it's a good idea to keep within the limits I just mentioned. Over here, you have your positive and negative from the panel with your MC4 connectors, and it's going to go to a double pole circuit breaker and the circuit breaker rating is calculated by taking the total amperage output of your solar panel or solar array and multiplying it by 1.25. So if you come in around 23 amps, you'd want to go a little higher, take a 25. And the breaker looks like what you see right over here. I'll have a link to all these things posted in the video description area. You can see over here the two wires tie into the charge controller on the left side. Positive on the left and negative on the right. 
This charge controller is suitable for lead acid batteries, sealed lead acid batteries, gel batteries, as well as lithium chemistry batteries. In the picture right here, you can see the battery. That's the negative and positive. It goes to the second set of terminals on the charge controller. Once again, the negative on the right and positive on the left. And you can see right here, there's a fuse connected to the wire at the battery terminal. And you want to make sure that matches the MPPT rating. So if this is a 60 amp max, you want to make sure you have a 60 amp fuse. Make sure the wire can also handle the level of current. It's also very important to have all these connections as short as possible. So you have your solar panel on the roof, the cable runs into a shed or maybe your garage, and it goes directly to that breaker. All of these components should be very close together in that area. The battery I'll be using for the demonstration is the 12 volt 120 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that I put together in another video. There's going to be a connection at the post that leads to a power inverter. Now in this demonstration I'm just going to have the solar panel connected to the charge controller and also the battery. There's not going to be an inverter connected, there's no reason for that. I just want to show you how the system operates and the different settings. Besides the fuse right here, you're going to have another one at the battery positive and it goes directly into your inverter. Keep the fuse as close as possible to the battery post. Sizing of that fuse is pretty simple. You're going to figure out how much current is used by the power inverter. If you're using a 3000 watt unit, more than likely it's going to pull around 270 amps. You want to take that 270 and you want to make it 25 percent higher than that level. You also have to make sure you're using the correct size wire to be able to handle the current. With a 300 amp drawer you could probably get by using two number one stranded copper wires in parallel or one larger wire like a 4 aught stranded copper wire. The higher the voltage of the system, so if the battery is not going to be a 12, it could be 24 or 36, as well as the inverter, the wires are going to be smaller because there's going to be less current flowing. The fuse ratings are also going to be less. You want to make sure the solar panel, the rack that they're mounted on, as well as the frame are all connected together. You're going to run a ground wire that goes to a ground bus. You're going to take the housing of the charge controller, connect the wire to it, run that to the ground bus, and you're going to take the housing of the inverter, tie that to the ground bus, and then this wire right here goes to your ground rod. You can pick up a ground rod like you see right over here, Home Depot, Lowe's, or many other home improvement stores. And if you're wondering what the wire size should be for the grounds, I would go with a number 8 from the panels, and I would take a number 10 from the inverter and the charge controller. Use a number 8 going from the ground bus to the ground rod. The last thing I want to show you is right over here. This is the load output. You do not have to use it. If you install this charge controller inside of a shed, and it's going to be dark inside, you can have lighting in the shed. It could be LED lighting, whatever you like. Just make sure you keep it under 5 amps. Right over here is a 5 amp fuse. Now let's open up the unit and take a peek inside before I give you a quick demonstration. With the unit opened up, you can see the display panel board. Here's where it was connected with the cable. Over here, this flat cable goes to the membrane switches, connects right over here. On this side of the board, there's not too much going on. We have some inductors, a bunch of capacitors, as well as opto-isolators. The larger components handling all the current are on the back side of this board. I'll try and give you a view of it. They're all connected to a very large aluminum heat sink that's around six millimeters or one quarter of an inch thick. They're bolted to the heat sink using thermal compound. Okay, let's put this back together. Now before I connect up the solar panel so you can see the full operation with the lithium iron phosphate battery, first I'm going to connect up my power supply unit and a battery off to the right. You can see over here battery and over here is the power supply that would simulate the solar panel. Let me connect the battery first. After the fan turned off you can see the battery state of charge. It says out to that light. 
that's indicating there's voltage at the two output terminals that you can use for a light inside your shed. So if you were to measure the voltage of these two screws and the input, they would match. As of now, there's no power on the solar panel wires. This unit does have troubleshooting protection codes. One of them is number 18, which is input photovoltaic voltage is low. 60 is over temperature protection. 63, battery voltage is high. 65, battery voltage is low. 71, input photovoltaic voltage is high. 73, overcharging current. If you push this button right over here, that's the battery voltage, 13.6. Push it again. Over here you can see 3.0. 3.0 is the working mode. This unit has four different working modes. 3.0 means night mode or no charging. In this case, the panels aren't connected. Working mode number four is MPPT mode. Working mode number seven is absorption mode. And working mode number eight is floating mode. And over here is the temperature of this unit. Let's push this one more time. There you go, 18. As I said earlier, number 18 is input photovoltaic voltage is low. Let me turn on my power supply, it's set for 20 volts. And now it shows the sun and it's charging. You can see the battery going up and down. Output, everything's fine there. Push the down arrow. Now we're on number four. Now it's on MPPT mode. Temperature's rising a little bit. 14 volts is the battery. That's the amps, eight amps, 14.2. Photovoltaic voltage is 19.6, very close to what I'm showing, and it says 13 watts. The reason why it's going a little slow right now is because the battery I'm using is very near a full charge. The mode has changed to number seven, that's absorption mode, because the voltage of the battery is getting high. All right, let me push the program button. So what I'm gonna do first is disconnect the solar panel. And you can see the sun disappeared, nothing's going on. After pressing the program button, you're going to see D00. And what that setting is, is the load working time. So over here, you could leave it at 24, or you could push enter, and you could change it to how many hours you would like with that up and down arrow. Default is 24, so I'll just leave it at 24. You wanna to go to the next one now, push the up arrow. Now we're at D01. Now what D01 is, that's the default value for the float charge. So if we were going to be using a lead acid battery instead of a lithium iron phosphate, you push enter. And I would suggest making that around 13 point, maybe 13.8. Then you push enter. Okay, so if I go down and I go back up, it should have held. Yep, 13.8. Push the up arrow again. This over here is D02. And what that is, is the highest absorption charging voltage for the battery. So lead acid battery, we can make this 14.5. Very easy, you can put any of these settings to what you need for the type of battery that you're charging. So 14.5, enter. Let's go up and down, make sure it saved it. It did, all right. Now D03, you see it's showing a 10. And what that is, is 10 volts. That's a protection value for battery discharge. You can make it higher or lower. So let's get out of here now, push escape, and we're back to the beginning. So it's very easy to set up. According to the manufacturer of this unit, you can reverse by accident the input from the solar panel. So let me switch these two wires, turn it on the power, and make sure it does not damage the unit. First, turn off the power from the power supply unit. You can see the charging stopped, and we got code 18, which is low input voltage from the solar panels. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch. Let's turn it on, see what happens. Hopefully nothing breaks, because if something breaks, they lied. <laughs> Here we go. Well, I got news for you. It is not working, so that's a good thing. I have the power turned on. Nothing happening here, and I'm showing no current leaving the power supply. So let me reverse the wires with it on and make sure it comes right back on. And there you go. All right, so you can reverse the power coming in from the panels and it's not going to damage the unit. And not only if the wire from the solar panel got reversed, but if the wire got shorted somewhere, 
it will not damage the charge controller. The manufacturer does not state that you're able to reverse these two wires leading to the battery, so I will not be trying that. One thing that's going to be important for me to test is to make sure this unit can handle over temperature. So what I'm going to do is flip this on its side after it's connected up, and I'm going to take my heat gun, and I'm going to heat up that entire heat sink on the back of this unit to make sure the fan turns on. Then once the fan turns on, I'm going to continue to apply more heat to see if the unit turns off. And as you can see, after heating the back of the unit, the fan turned on. Okay, let's continue to heat a little bit more. According to the manual, at 75C, the unit should shut down. And as you can see right here, I heated it all the way up to 82C, and the unit is still powering. So my suggestion would be, do not overload this unit, because I'm uncertain if the unit will actually power off in the event of an excessive load. Instead of using just one 400 watt solar module, I decided to use two. So the one on the left is a JA Solar 395 watt rating, 40 volts at 10 amps. And over there is my LG, it's a 400 watt panel, same output around 10 amps. So the two of these are connected in parallel, so we're going to have around 40 to 42 volts at 20 amps. And I'm inputting that over here into the MPPT charge controller. And you can see I have my lithium iron phosphate battery all ready to go. I'm using two number 10 stranded copper for the negative and two number 10 stranded copper for the positive. Each one can handle around 30 amps. Goes right over to the MPPT charge controller. Two here and two there. And here's the negative from the solar panels. And over here is the positive. Both solar panels are connected together using what you see right here. Positive and positive into one. Negative and negative into one. And I just have a bullet connector to go to the charge controller for the demonstration. And over here is a, another bullet connector, the female, and it slides perfectly inside. So if you ever have to do any testing, you could do it this way. It fits perfectly and locks in tight, and then the bullet goes in there. And here it is connected to the panels. And it's not even full sun. We're peaking 63, 64. That's how much is going into that lithium iron phosphate battery. Right here you can see the voltage of the panel on the left, the wattage on the right. 13.7, we're going over 60 amps still, peaking out around 64, before it actually hits 70 when I was watching it. What I'm going to do is take out the aluminum that's underneath the charge controller and just place two wooden sticks allowing an airspace for cooling. This way we can have an accurate gauge if the unit's going to overheat at the 60 amp level after one hour. You can see the voltage is much higher and the current is much lower because we're near a full charge. Now the interesting thing is my battery management system, it's only rated for up to 50 amps charging current, but it was handling 60 to 65 amps with no problem at all for one full hour. The housing of the BMS was only slightly warm. The temperature of the charge controller never went above 47C at that 60 amp current so you should not have any issue at all using this unit up to 60 amps. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.